So after being in tech for almost a decade now, and having been gone from a junior developer all the way to a manager in a Fortune 500 company, to then quitting, starting my own firm, scaling it to seven figures, I've talked with thousands of developers, and every single developer at some point in time always hits me with the same exact question, should I quit? So this video is for you, mid-level to senior level developers who are currently in a nine to five software engineering job and are thinking of quitting. Here is my brutally honest advice. First and foremost, if you have any type of desire for freedom in your life, be it financial, time, or location, then with 99.9% .9 certainty, I can tell you, yes, you should quit your job, especially if you want these things within the next five to 10 years, okay? The reason I say that is because the only people who are excluded from this rule are those who already have an equity stake in a startup or a company that got funded and they know they have actual equity in a company that should an exit come, they'll be able to make a lot of money. For the rest of you who are working strictly on a W-2 or even a 1099 as a freelancer, right? Making anywhere from, let's say, zero to 250K a year or even less, then you should quit. I know that might sound drastic because you might be like, you don't even know my situation. You don't know about my family. You don't know about, about the kids I have to take care of. You don't know about the significant other I have to take care of. I have all these expenses. How can you tell me to quit? Here's how I can tell you to quit. Because I know what you're capable of if you simply put in the same amount of time that you're putting into nine to five into a business, okay? Most people don't quite understand the disproportionate gains that you can get in a business environment as opposed to a typical nine to five. And that's natural because our education never taught us. Our education is very similar to that of a puzzle piece. I want you to think of us every day, me and you, the software engineers, as puzzle pieces. And our education is the puzzle board, okay? The way we were taught was that we were simply puzzle pieces that were supposed to fit into this puzzle, okay? One shape at a time. And if we ever had any ragged edges or got out of shape, then of course what would happen is we would get put back into shape, okay? That's exactly how we are currently as software engineers. As a result, we have a very limited worldview of what's possible and what's not possible and what's real and what's not real. And as a result, we don't quite understand the disproportionate gains you can get in a business. I remember, it wasn't too long ago, about four to five years ago, that I make what I make in a day now, what I used to make in a month, okay? And I would have never, ever in my life been able to imagine that because I simply did not understand how disproportionate of a gain you can have in a business versus a nine to five environment. I'm not even mentioning taxes yet, especially if you're from the United States. Let's say you're making 120K a year, which is 10K a month, which is based on what I talk about, 90% of you guys have the same goal. If I can make 10K after taxes, I should be good. So if you make 10K in the US, after taxes, you're left with about 6 to 7K based on the state you're in. I'm not even counting any expenses you have, uh, which is going to be minimum 2 to 3K for less of your rent, your housing, blah, 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 blah. So if you're in states like California or New York, 120K is basically the minimum you need to like live, quote unquote, an average life. Okay, so even that isn't going to cut it. So even outside of taxes, right? And then some of you might even say, okay, but a 9 to 5 is safer than a business. It's actually not especially not now, okay? I'm not gonna talk about the h one visa stuff, none of that. I'm not gonna even bring in AI into this even though I definitely can. I'm only gonna talk about the foundations. Then the foundations is that people believe a nine to five is safer than a business. But that is simply not true because we have to define what we mean by safe, right? Do you mean safe as in consistent income month to month? Then yeah, to some degree at W2 you get consistent income month to month. But safe, I view it in terms of future, in terms of future-proofing yourself. And if we view safe as future-proofing, then the business is 100% more future-proof as opposed to any 9 to 5 that you can get. And here is what I mean. I've had students of mine who, let's say, come join Code to CEO, I work with them, and within two to three months, they are at a level that they spent countless of years beforehand getting to, okay? So somebody goes to four years of university, goes into another eight years in the workforce, that's 12 years, they become a senior level, they're making let's say 20 to 30K a month, and then they do that in about one or two months in the, in the actual startup accelerator, and then they tell me, how do I do that? And I tell them for the same exact reason that business has such disproportionate returns as opposed to a nine to five. So 
all of you who've spent the three years, four years, five years, however long you've spent in the industry, understand that if you put those same amount of 40 hours every single week into an actual business, you simply can't imagine the level of achievement you would have had. Okay, I'm not saying that to make you regret it, or I'm not saying that to make you feel bad, but rather I'm saying that to make you understand that business is by nature extremely disproportionate Okay, in terms of what your ROI will be. And for us as software engineers, this is pretty new to us because we always believe in input, output in a very linear environment. We're not too familiar with exponential growth and that's exactly what a business is, right? So whenever you think to yourself, oh, I can't quit because I'm not gonna have income because it's gonna take me years to get my business off the ground, you're treating it just like a nine to five, okay? Just like how you would treat a nine to five. And how do you treat a nine to five? Well, if I get, let's say a 150K job, I'm gonna to need to work for a year, maybe get a five to 10% raise, and then maybe I'll be able to get about 170K, 175K, right, and go from there. And maybe after working really hard for five years, I'll be able to get a thing job that nets me 350K to 400K, right? So you view the jump from, let's say, 100K to 400K over the span of five to 10 years. In a business, that is very much possible in a span of a few months. For some people, even less, okay? So that's what I mean by disproportionate gains you're entering a playing field that nothing operates the way you think it does, okay? And this was one of the biggest things that I had to understand when I quit my job. Because let me tell you, quitting my job was the hardest decision I ever made in my life. And trust me, I've made some pretty difficult decisions, but to this day, quitting my job was still the hardest that I've ever had to do. Because I had to leave behind, essentially, my degree, essentially my four years of university, all the time and effort I put into that specific company because I knew given enough time I could make a partner in the company, right? All that time and effort, all those blood, sweat and tears, I had to willingly and consciously rationalize to myself that what I'm doing is right and there's a better opportunity elsewhere. Even though at the time I didn't quite understand the leverage of a business and the disproportionate gains that I could get out of a business, right? But that's, that's what I'm trying to do with this video is to get you guys to understand that if you're afraid of quitting, Right? Or if you're asking yourself, should I quit? And you want financial freedom, you want to be able to live that type of life, time freedom, financial freedom, and location freedom, then you have to quit. It's not a question of should I, it's you have to. So your question should be, okay, when? When do I quit? And I think that's a more appropriate question to ask. Because once again, it goes back to the fundamentals. What do you want out of this life? That will determine whether you have to quit or you don't have to. Because this isn't a qu question of should I quit? No, it's when do I quit, right? If you want these things, if you want this type of freedom, right, you need to quit. It's not a matter of should I quit. The only person who should ask themselves if they should quit or not is if they know for a fact they don't want to do a business or get involved with that type of life, they're fine with the freedom that they have, right? And they simply want to make more money or maybe work on something a bit more passionate, but they're happy with the nine to five. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. No, it's not. If that's your prerogative, do what you want to do. But if you are a person who wants the finer things in life, who wants to actually have the time freedom, that location freedom, and that financial freedom, then you need to quit, okay? So it's less about should you and more about when should you. So let's talk about when you should quit. I quit personally once I realized that I pretty much got fed up with it. It got to a point where I saw how much money they were making off of me and I decided I can't tolerate this any longer. I'm not going to live forever. I have to quit now, right? So for you, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, there is no quote unquote perfect time to quit because no matter what month it is, no matter if it's before your bonus, during your bonus, after your bonus, doesn't matter. You're always going to find the reason to not quit, okay? So if you're looking for a perfect time frame to quit, let me tell you up front, there's no perfect time frame to quit. You're always going to find a reason to not quit should the time come. So rather, the way you should look at it is more so, once again, future-proofing. If you quit right now, how long can you survive? How long can your needs be met? How long would you have before you need to start looking for money to pay the rent, buying food, and so on and so forth? Because if you have at least, at least three months, I would say you should go ahead and quit. Once again, I know that's a bold statement coming out of me, but I can tell you, based on the people I've worked with, based on the results that people have gotten, Three months is more than enough if you spend the same amount of time that you spent at a nine to five, 40 hours every single week, working diligently on a business or trying to create something of your own at the very least, 
you will be able to not only replace your 9-to-5 income, but even in many cases, surpass it, okay? So to kind of recap of everything, if you want to find your things in life, if you're looking for any type of freedom, you need to quit. It's not a matter of should you, it's when. If you're looking for a time to quit, there's no perfect time, understand that. No matter what happens, whether you get the promotion or not, whether you get the bonus or not, you will never have a perfect quote-unquote time to quit because you'll always find a justifiable reason for you not to quit. The only thing that should determine whether or not you should quit your job right now is going to be strictly depending on your financial situation and if you have anybody that you're responsible for, especially their well-being, and how long you can sustain them without having a source of income. For me, when I quit, I had about, well, I had a lot of time. I could have gone years without having to work, but I ended up burning a lot of money because I was doing a business and I was trying different things. So I ran through a lot of my savings and everything that I had saved up in a few months, right? And I got to a very desperate point. I have a video about that in uh, it's, it's from a while back. You can check it and you can take a look at that. But if you have enough money to go at least three months and your food's covered, your rent is covered, any other type of basic essentially necessities covered for you to live, I think you should go ahead and quit. Especially in a time frame that we're in now, in the world that we're living in now, there hasn't been a better opportunity to actually take that chance on yourself, to trust yourself, to do what it is that you really want to do. Once again, you should only listen to this. You should only listen to what I'm saying and do what I'm saying if within the next five to 10 years, you want that freedom. You want to have the time freedom, financial freedom, and location freedom. If you don't care about any of these things, if you value other things in life, you should not listen to me, right? Because if you don't want to live the life that I'm living, you should not listen to me. You should not take this advice. I'm telling you straight up. So look at the life that I'm living. Look at how I do things. Look at the time that I have. Look at the freedom that I have. And see if that's what you resonate with. If that's what you want, then take my advice to heart. If not, do not take my advice because that's not the life that you want to live, right? So I know this is a little, this video is slightly different than usual. No scripting, nothing of that sort. And just me sitting in front of the camera talking and I actually have to go work out soon. But I wanted to make this video because I've gotten this question so many times. Should I quit? Should I quit? When's the perfect time to quit? And I just wanted to make a video to address all those questions for all those people at the same exact time. Okay. If you want the finer things out of life, do not rely on a nine to five. Only exception is if you can get equity stake in a company, but don't go outside of your way to pursue an equity stake in a company, right? Your goal should be to create something of your own, always a business 100% of the way. So with that, I hope you took something away from this video. If you have any questions whatsoever, please leave a comment down below and I'll get to it as soon as possible. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good one.